Have you always known that you're on a soul path? And have you wondered how to gain real insight into the steps along your own unique journey? Welcome everyone, I'm Sarah Main, and thank you for joining me on Dhammayanti, the show for your soul. I'm so glad to have you along. Dhammayanti means peace and calm. Dhammayanti sheds a light for your soul through the wisdom that shines in the universal language of Sanskrit. Dhammayanti is the show that speaks to your soul, connects with your soul, and enriches your soul. Join me now on Dhammayanti, the show for your soul, and be inspired and uplifted by the beautiful light of this profound, timeless wisdom. Welcome everyone, greetings, welcome to Dhammayanti, the show for your soul with me, Sarah Main. And today we're going to be talking about body, mind, heart, soul, the total package. So to achieve balance and harmony, we have to look, look after every part of ourselves. And that means caring not just for our physical needs, but also our mind, our heart and our soul. And so that is the total package. And today we're going to be talking about nourishing exercising and caring for the total package, our complete self, our whole self. So when we talk about self-care, this is it, the total package. So it's finding balance and aligning ourselves. So exercise benefits the body. Stillness refreshes the mind. Connection nourishes the heart. And freedom liberates the soul. Exercise benefits the body. Stillness refreshes the mind. Connection nourishes the heart and freedom liberates the soul. Quite frankly, if you just had that, everything would take care of itself. And even better than that, if you just meditate, that would take care of everything. So we have a body, a physical body. Even though we're a spiritual being having a physical experience, in this physical experience, we have a physical body, obviously, a mind, a heart, and a soul or a spirit. The spirit of us. So think of them as bodies. It's one way of understanding all of this. And we need to apply our mind to understand this because then we can make better choices as we go through the day. We can be more discerning so that we care for all of ourselves rather than end up sort of getting out of balance and all over the place. So think of them as bodies. Now, just like our physical body, they all need food, nourishment, they all need exercise. That means use, work, application, movement in some form or another, and purposeful movement. And they need rest for restoration, all right, and recreation. We talk about recreation. That means recreation, rebuilding, making anew. So if you think of the, the needs of a physical body, the mental body, our mind, the, the emotional body, our heart, and the spiritual body, our spirit, our, the sort of connection to our soul, all need the same. They need nourishment, food. They need exercise. That means pur purposeful use and work and application and fun. You know, they need movement and rest. All in measure. The essence of measure is knowing where to stop, when to stop. They need just the right amount, given the time, the circumstances, the location, all right? And it's a fluid thing, but if we're awake and aware, then this balance, this alignment and this harmony is possible between these bodies. And that's this sort of feeling we have of just feeling really good. The body's feeling good, the mind's alert and, and clear, the heart is steady and open and loving and resilient. And the spirit is connected and we don't feel separate. This is the simplest way of describing it. So in when we're in alignment, we have this uh, physical body. It's healthy and relaxed. It's energized, strong, flexible, however you want to describe it. The mind is clear. It's quiet. It's creative, productive. It's receptive. It's efficient. And the heart, the spiritual part of the uh, emotional part of us, it's happy, it's loving, it's open, resilient, steady, enthusiastic, whatever. It's, it's not confused <laughs> at all. And, of course, um, then that it allows for the spiritual body 
to be connected to and, um, and we're connected to our soul. We're integrated. But we know when we're out of alignment, um, you know, the physical body is stressed, it's tense, could be ill, uh, fatigued, there can be addictions depending on what you're drawn to to try and ameliorate the um, stress. Um, we can be, there can be revulsions to things. Um, the mind is distracted, it's narrow, critical, trivial, and it's repetitive, right? This is when we're out of alignment, thinking is confused, and the body's suffering from all these stresses, right? And the heart, the negative uh, side of the emotions, we can be experiencing fear, anger, greed, jealousy, misery, lust. The list is endless, of course, as we know. And then we're disconnected from our spiritual side, from our spiritual body. It's just shut off. So we're not connected. It's closed off. We're disconnected. And we forget about the divine spark of our soul. So in Sanskrit, the word for balance is santulana, santulana. It's a beautiful word, santulana. And santulana literally means to weigh one thing against another or to balance together, okay? Um, so think of, uh, and, and there's a, a great Sanskrit scholar called Panini, and he talked about the root of the word santulana, and he, shared, he said measuring is uh, it's all about measuring and balancing is to be found in the act of measuring and we think okay that's a rather circular and sort of obvious thing to say so how does this help us understand put simply well he's what he's saying is you'll find out about measure and balance when you do it when you experience it there's no point in sitting there thinking about it um, first you need to actually do it so living life making choices every moment of the day what to eat, what to think. Yes, we make choices about what we think, whether we are aware of it or not. Emotions, yes, there are choices in that as well. Um, and what we do, obviously, physically um, is living life and finding out as we go what brings about balance and alignment and how we're feeling and what creates imbalance and misalignment. Okay, so we'll find out about measuring and balance when we do it, in experience, all right? So we're not going to find out about it in a vacuum or in some isolated situation. And we, we know all too well when we're out of measure, out of, out of balance and misaligned, we just know what that feels like. So the key point of the word balance is measuring. And measuring means knowing when to stop one activity before embarking on the next, when to stop one thought before embarking on the next. So an analogy may help think of a set of scales and we want to pour out sand into one side um, and that creates an imbalance. So then we have to pour sand into the other side of the scales, the balance, and we keep pouring, we keep pouring until balance is achieved and we can see that in our experience, in direct um, observation, and then we stop. So the essence of measure is knowing when to stop, and we know by seeing that the scales have come back into balance. Then we stop pouring because if we keep pouring sand onto the other side, we'll create an imbalance on the other side. So the essence of measure is knowing when to stop. If you think of the scales, it's an obvious thing. We This is an, an obvious piece of knowledge but so easy to be overlooked. So there's a couple of stories. They're in my book, actually, in Chapter 2, because I've, I've got a whole chapter on this, so important. Um, and there's a story about a farmer. Well, let's just see how things turn out. And um, he, it's a traditional story. There's a, a farmer and he has a horse and the horse is rather old and he decides the horse, he's going to let the horse now go free, not work on the farm, and it can live out its life roaming free. Um, and so he lets it go and the horse wanders off and all the neighbours come by and say, oh, it's terribly sorry, um, we're re really sorry for you. You don't have your horse to help you. And he says, oh, well, we'll just see how things turn out. And then the horse, some months later, wanders back to the farm healthy again, having had time to rest and eat fresh grasses and so on. So all the neighbours come back and say, wow, isn't this amazing? The horse is back. And what's more, all these young horses um, 
followed him back to the farm. So we got all these new horses to help work on the farm. And the neighbours said, this is amazing. You've got your old horse back, good as new, and you've got all these other horses now. This is incredible. And he said, we'll just see how things work out. So then his son, who helped him on the farm, was helping to train these new horses because they were wild. So he's training them so that they can be used on the farm. And one of the, the uh, new horses kicked him or, and knocked him and broke his leg. So now the sun's laid up and the neighbours come by, very helpful neighbours, and say, this is terrible, oh dear, you know, now you're without your son and all this. And he says, we'll just see how things work out. So during this period of recovery of the sun, a war breaks out and all the young men in the area are sent off to to fight and the neighbours come but the the young man the, the farmer's son can't fight because he's got a broken leg and he's recovering and so the generals um, deem him to be unfit for battle and the neighbours come by and say you're so lucky um, you know your son hasn't had to go off to fight and the man says well we'll just see how things work out so then the son recovers, but he's got this limp and so he can't walk properly. And the neighbours say, oh, you can see where this is going. Oh, this is terrible. Your son doesn't walk properly. And he says, oh, we'll just see how things work out. So this goes on with all these different things of life. And he just keeps saying, well, we'll just see how things work out. And eventually the war's over and they're successful on their farm and they can help everyone else. And, you know, he's wealthy and and he cares for and supports everyone in the town. And um, everyone says, oh, you're so wonderful and your son's there and all this sort of thing. And he just says, we'll just see how things work out. So that is an indication of equanimity. So in alignment of body, mind and heart and soul, we achieve equanim equanimity and a soul connection. Now, this can be difficult to sustain in the face of changing and sometimes challenging circumstances in life. I mean, we all know it, I do. But being able to see the bigger picture is a way of finding that point of steadiness um, in the ups and downs of life. And, um, and I'm not saying we have to be passive and not feel things, but have a certain detachment about the highs and lows that we associate with just the circumstances and challenges of life. So prioritising can help maintain balance. So after the break, we'll, um, I'm going to tell you another story about prioritising because this is important in terms of practical ways of maintaining balance and um, being able to detach from the, the sort of highs and lows which we can become addicted to in life, the highs, highs and lows of emotions as events and challenges in life. Um, play out and um, we still want to enjoy life but we also need an element of equanimity and peace within um, because that's where the connection is to our soul and to our higher being so I'll be back after the break with a story about prioritizing welcome back everyone welcome back to our show today um, on the body, mind, heart and soul, caring for the total package, your whole self. And uh, before the break, I was related the story about um, equanimity and equanimity is important in terms of maintaining some sort of balance and alignment of our body, mind, heart and our a connection to our soul, our spiritual element. Um, and... There's a, a story that I'm going to tell you now. It's about prioritising and that can help maintain balance and equanimity through the ups and downs of life. And um, it's called filling the jar. And a teacher walked into a class one day, put a big glass jar in front of the students and proceeded to fill the glass jar with large stones. And he turned to the class and said, is the jar full? And he filled it to the top with these large stones. And the student said, yep, that's full. And then he didn't say anything. And then he got these smaller pebbles and started to pour them into the jar and shake the jar so that the pebbles started um, falling down and filling the spaces between the large stones in the jar. And he did that until all the spaces in the jar and it was full to the top. And he turned to the students he, 
students and he says um, and asks, is the jar full? And they all say, yes, it's, it's absolutely full. Then he gets out, he doesn't say anything, gets out a bag of sand and he starts pouring it in. Of course, the sand then falls all the way down into the smaller, smaller gaps in between the large stones and then the smaller pebbles. And right from the bottom, right up to the top, he pours in all the sand. And so now the jars filled to the top with the sand. And now, and he turns to the students and says, is the jar full? And, and now they're saying, yes, this is full. And he gives them a moment to reflect. And he says, what does this tell you about living life? And they have this incredible discussion. I mean, imagine a teacher doing that. That's just not saying anything, just demonstrating and then asking the question. How powerful is that? Already you've got an image in your mind, I'm sure. Every time I relate this story, when I wrote it in my book, I retold it in my book. Um, it's one of those sort of famous stories. It's attributed to certain people, but I don't think they actually wrote it. Um, it's just one of those evergreen stories. And he, he then said, this jar represents your life and the big stones are the parts of your life that are the highest of highest importance and that is um, your love and connection to a higher being to God to your spiritual side the spiritual aspect in whatever form that is for you um, it's your connection to your family to your loved ones it's all the important the, the things of great meaning they are the the big stones and you fill your life up with those first that's your first priority then the smaller stones represent your your job your work your um responsibilities i mean you, you know your daily responsibilities and and of course there's always time for those but you need to have the important things in first and then the sand represents all the other bits and pieces. It's time on social media. It's, it's all the other bits and pieces, activities, things like that. They have their place, but obviously they're not the top priority and there's always space for them, but they need to work around everything else. Then you have priority and you can maintain some sort of balance in your life. And... Um, you know, enough said on explaining the story, you get the point. The prioritizing helps to maintain the balance. And that image of the teacher going in with the stones, then the smaller pebbles, and then the sand, it says it all, really. So, prioritizing is so important. And um, let's talk about practical ways for maintaining balance and alignment. So, remember, we have a physical body, mental body, an emotional body. And the connection to our spiritual body, that's our connection to our soul. And like our physical body, all these aspects of the, the selves, it sounds mechanical to talk about it like this, but all these aspects, um, they um, we can think about them in terms of bodies. And it sounds mechanical to think of it like this, but this is how we actually, when we talk about self-care, we're not just scrabbling around. This is actually how we nurture and look after ourselves. And we all need to do it. Men and women, we're human beings, but we have different needs. So it's very much a discernment yourself of what you need at any given time, stage of your life, what you're doing, time of the year, time of the day. You just need to be awake and aware and it will become obvious. Um, and, of course, caring for the physical body, the physical body we know needs food, exercise and rest. So does all the other bodies. The mind needs food, exercise and rest. The emotional body, the heart needs food, exercise and rest. And the spiritual body. Okay, so practical ways. So the body thrives on movement. The mind rests in stillness. The heart is nourished by beauty. And the soul flourishes in freedom. So let's take the physical body. Simple, fresh, nutritious food in the right measure. If you just only eat broccoli, you're not going to be healthy. So fresh, nutritious food of a range of foods, um, eaten consciously, tasting it, enjoying it, the body will maintain a healthy balance. Um, 
physical exercise of course do what you love gym sport yoga walking I do lots of those and I also dance I was what I love doing and that feeds me and exercises me and restores me in so many different ways because I do ballroom dancing Latin dancing club dancing and um, I love it you know just love it and then good quality sleep and if you get the food and the exercise right, generally speaking, the sleep will take care of itself. The body will rest naturally. But it, the connection between the mind, which is throughout the body, throughout every cell of the body, the, the, the body needs nourishment. It needs good input, input, just like the body, the physical body needs good quality food input. The mind needs interesting, useful, stimulating subjects. Of, of all sorts, not just superficial stuff, because that's just like eating junk food all the time. You need to feed the mind with good stuff, like good wisdom. Like there's wisdom in the shows I put together, and I do it deliberately because I'm offering nourishment for the mind and the heart. Um, just something that makes you stop and think, oh, yeah, you know, that is already feeding the mind with something new and stimulating and interesting and hopefully uplifting. Um, for exercise for the mind, problem solving, finding a solution to something, using your mind well rather than just letting it run you, saying, all right, what's the solution to this is applying the mind in ways it's meant to be used. Good discussion and debate of alternate points of views rather than getting defensive or on the attack. Um, listen to other points of views is exercise for the mind that's healthy. You, you actually need it. And learning something new, just learn something new. Um, I don't know, decide you're going to learn 10 new statements in a different language. There's plenty online, um, you know, 10 new statements in Japanese, for example, if you've never spoken Japanese. Um, that's what my husband's doing at the moment. <laughs> and he can order coffee in Japanese now and he sounds really good. Um, but he learns Hebrew. My husband loves languages apart from anything else. Um, and, uh, you know, he speaks multiple languages and he just applies his mind to it. Um, and focused attention and restful, restful mental activity is very good for the mind, for food, exercise and rest. Emotional exercise, um, emotional food is beauty, objects of beauty being out in nature it's harmony it's service to others is food for the heart and the emotions then exercise for the emotions is creativity it's singing painting drawing dancing music service to others as well because that's a natural flow of giving and receiving um, is exercise for the mind for the um, the heart the emotional center and then rest for the emotional center is love affection tranquility, giving and receiving, gratitude and meditation. And spiritual food is spiritual works, it's scripture, it's wisdom. Um, disciplined practices and prayer and overcoming inner li limitations are spiritual work. That's the exercise bit, purposeful action. And then it doesn't seem like action, but let's put it in that category. And then meditation and Awareness is rest for the spirit, the spiritual body. And meditation covers so much of all of this. So you just get the picture of ways to achieve balance for all the four aspects of ourselves. Um, and I would encourage you to do that. And if you want to find out more about ways to do that, there's um, go to my website, damayanti.store, and browse through the collection of the collections of the beautiful spiritual jewellery because that's another way of staying in memory. I'm wearing my uh, Prema heart necklace and at the back I've had engraved, you can personalise the engraving on the back of the necklaces and I put remember mind remember and that's from the Isha Upanishad and I can wear this and it's an energetic reminder with me and it's beautiful and it reminds me, it keeps me connected. It's just a helpful balancing point for myself um, and it reminds me of my resilience, my power to bounce back about love. This one says prema and patience. So go to my website, damayanti.store, and check it out. There's um, the show archive there on the podcast page. Uh, there's a blog and there's all sorts of things. And I'm on social media, on Facebook and Instagram as well. And so let's end with some 
food for the heart, the mind, the heart, the soul, uh, and for the body, frankly. And this is the peace prayer from the Yajur Veda, and it's in Sanskrit. The meaning in English, in heaven peace, peace in the space between, on earth peace, on the waters peace, in plants peace, in trees peace, peace in all powers, in spirit peace, peace in everything, peace alone peace, 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 peace. And another version of that in English, may peace radiate there in the whole sky as well as in the vast ethereal space everywhere. May peace reign all over this earth, in water and in all herbs, trees and creepers. May peace flow over the whole universe. May peace be in the supreme being. And may all exist in peace, peace only peace. Om peace, peace and peace to us and all beings. And now the Sanskrit. Om Dhyal Shanti Antarik Shan Shanti Priti vi shanti apa shanti o shadhaya shanti vanaspataya shanti vishwe deva shanti brahma shanti sarvang shanti shanti reva shanti om shanti 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 Thank you for spending time with me on Damayanti, the show for your soul. To find out more about Damayanti or to get my book, Conscious Confidence, use the wisdom of Sanskrit to find clarity and success or to purchase my range of beautiful spiritual jewelry, go to my website, damayanti.store. That's D-A-M-A-Y-A-N-T-I.store, damayanti.store. See you next time.